Thank you again for joining us at Silicon Mountain Training, your source for computer training and support. This is just one of a series of programs on computer use and software applications. For more information on Silicon Mountain's other training programs, please call the 800 number on your screen or write to the address. We'd like to hear from you. The program you're about to see addresses the following critical issues regarding the ergonomic environment. Repetitive stress injuries such as carpal tunnel syndrome. Prevention and recognition of injuries. Proper workstation layout and human factors like the eyes, wrists, hands, and posture. Enjoy the program and thanks for watching. In 1981, it was reported that uh, about 6 million people worked at computer workstations. By 1991, there were more than 50 million people working at workstations. So we're seeing a very recent increase in this kind of behavior. And along with that, we will see an increase in um, injuries to the, to the worker and the resulting absenteeism and costly claims. Designing the workplace to fit the worker is actually science. It's called ergonomics. Improving the ergonomic environment is essential because it increases productivity and reduces errors and injuries. An ergonomically correct environment uses furniture with flexible settings that allow you to set up your workstation according to your size. In setting up your workstation, your goal is to position the chair, keyboard, and computer display so that you can assume the least stressful position for your body. Workers need to keep an open mind to um, the possibility of another way to sit at their workstation or configure their workstation because it's in their best interest. They might be very surprised at how much of a relief that can be physically. Your arms and legs will be at right angles, your feet flat on the floor, your wrists perfectly straight, and the lumbar curve of your back supported. And remember, if you make an adjustment to one aspect of your workstation, then it may be necessary to readjust other aspects to ensure that your body remains properly aligned. What is a properly aligned body? Sounds interesting. Let's take a look. This is a properly aligned spine, and these key spinal areas are the cervical curve, the thoracic curve, and the lumbar curve, which bears most of the strain of sitting. When your spine is not properly aligned, then your ligaments and muscles must work overtime to compensate for the added stress on your spinal column. This, in turn, causes back fatigue, strain, and injury. An ergonomically sound chair will help keep your spine aligned which makes the chair the most important aspect of the ergonomically correct environment. All other adjustments are made relative to the position of the chair, so this is where we'll begin. We will use this chair, created by Steelcase, to illustrate all of the adjustments that you should be able to make for an ergonomic environment. The Criterion Task Chair is completely adjustable and accommodates any sized person. The seat moves up and down, forward and back. The chair back has a convex lumbar support that can be adjusted up or down. This is probably its most important feature. You can also use a pillow or roll towel and place it here. The chair seat should be padded for obvious reasons. 
armrests can help relieve some back pressure, but they must be adjustable so your elbow forms a 90 degree angle. Grocery checkout workers, meat packers who slice scores of carcasses a day, factory workers who perform the same task for months and years, many now suffer from numbness, weakness and sometimes long-term disability. The syndrome is called cumulative trauma disorder and the fastest growing category of victims includes white collar professional and clerical workers who spend their days pounding away at keyboards. A three-year study by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health of Telephone Workers at U.S. to West Communications found that 111 out of 518 employees who used computers had repetitive stress injuries, also referred to as RSI. Cumulative trauma disorders are caused by four factors. Uh, the first one is repetitive motion. The second one is the position that you're in. The third one is the amount of force you use. And the fourth one is time. When you combine all these things together, or even just one of them, over time, they will cause injury. You probably thought only your mother would tell you this, but now we're going to demonstrate how to sit in your chair. First, your feet must be firmly planted on the floor. Ergonomic footrests are available, like this one, but you can be resourceful if you need to. Second, when your torso is vertically straight, the seat pan should be tilted slightly forward, just enough to open up the angle of your pelvis so that you will naturally assume the lumbar curve. Your buttocks should be at the back of the seat, and the line formed by your torso and your thighs will be 90 degrees or greater. Research shows that in this position, intervertebral disc pressure is reduced by transferring the weight of the upper body to the backrest. To be certain of the best position for you, trust whatever feels right. Now you should still have a couple of inches of space between the end of the chair and the back of your knees, otherwise your legs can go numb. Tendons are like long pulleys directing the movements of the fingers from many places in the hands and arms. Now, how can using this incapacitate all those tendons in our wrists? Anytime you type continuously with your wrist turned in any way, you can cause injury, which can easily happen when your workstation is not set up correctly. As the hands are overworked, especially in the wrong position, tendons react to the abuse. They can swell, producing an extremely painful condition called tendinitis. As tissues become inflamed and swollen, they can press on nearby nerves, causing tingling and weakness in the fingers. Other conditions in addition to tendinitis include myositis. This occurs when muscles in the forearm that control the movement of fingers become irritated. Soreness can also result from the inflammation of sheaths surrounding the tendons. Then, of course, many people aggravate their injuries outside the office by even the simplest movements, such as holding the telephone and stirring dinner. Allowing the injury to progress too far can lead to a more serious condition. Among the more extreme and less common forms of cumulative trauma is carpal tunnel syndrome. It develops when tissues in the palm side of the wrist swell, squeezing the carpal tunnel nerve that runs through the area. One mild case of carpal tunnel syndrome costs five to ten thousand dollars in medical care and lost work time, according to a study by the American Physical Therapy Association. A serious case, requiring surgery on both hands, costs one hundred thousand dollars. Carpal tunnel syndrome can cause crippling pain for months or years. Surgery, however, can bring relief to many people. But if the patient returns to the same activities that caused the carpal tunnel syndrome, then the ailment has an 80% chance of recurrence. In terms of lost time at work and the claim itself, uh, the cost to the employers in this country is estimated to be $27 billion a year. And they expect that to uh, increase tremendously in the next, over the next few years. The, the cost to employees is really in terms of, uh, in a sense, quality of lifestyle. 
They may have insurance that will cover the cost of their medical uh, expenses, but you can never replace uh, a hand or wrist, and, and that's where the cost really is to the individual. Despite all the aggravation we cause our bodies, physical stress may be only part of the problem. Psychological stress while on the job caused by job insecurity and pressures to perform quickly probably works its own mischief by creating muscle tension which reduces blood flow to hard-working muscles and tendons. Without enough oxygen, these tissues become fatigued and prone to injury. Eventually, scar tissue develops in the afflicted areas. These injuries, if not treated, can result in diminished coordination and strength. If you experience any of the following symptoms, numbness, tingling, pins and needles, burning or pain in the fingers, then be forewarned. Take steps now to prevent further injury. Otherwise, you may have to resort to surgery or rely on splints and medications for the rest of your life. And 80% of these injuries return. The keyboard should sit lower than the surface of the desk. This desk by Parallax comes with a keyboard holder that can be adjusted. Attachable holders are available, but not all desks will allow for this kind of add-on. Align your keyboard so that it is low enough to allow your arms to hang naturally at your side with elbows at a right angle. As your hands touch the keyboard, your wrists must be straight and in line with the keyboard. These three common wrist positions can strain muscles, tendons, and nerves. A keyboard holder with a wrist rest, as in this parallax desk system, can help keep your wrist straight. Or, again, being the resourceful person you are, you can make a rest by rolling up a small towel. Repetitive stress injuries, such as tendinitis and carpal tunnel syndrome, now strike an estimated 185,000 U.S. office and factory workers a year. The cases account for more than half the country's occupational illnesses, compared with about 20% a decade ago. Speaking of illnesses, I feel a little woozy when I stare at this for too long. Let's take a look at the best monitor position for healthy eyes and muscles. Eye strain can exacerbate existing tension-related problems, like back and neck pains because of the additional stress to the body. In situating your monitor and your visual displays, your goal is to minimize head movement and changes in focal length. Both can cause muscle fatigue to the neck and eyes. The monitor should be two feet from the eyes if regular sized, farther away if the screen is excessively large. Set the contrast level so that the characters on the screen are easy to see, but not so bright that they glare and feel hard on the eyes. The monitor can be placed in a couple of different positions. First, there is the above the desk position where your eye level matches the top of the monitor. Parallax shows us another effective desk system, where the monitor is placed under the desk surface, under glass, and tilted at about 35 degrees, or wherever you can maintain the three natural curves of your spine. Placement of visual displays, such as document holders, is also important to reduce strain. You want to minimize head movement and changes in focal lengths. Both can cause muscle fatigue of the neck and eyes. Other countries are saving money by implementing ergonomic systems before injuries occur. Sweden, for example, has had a strict ergonomic standard since 1979. And in Germany, insurance companies scale back benefits to companies that do not adequately guard against repetitive stress injuries. Your lighting goal is to eliminate glare on the computer display thereby helping to eliminate eye strain. If there's a window near your computer, place your desk perpendicular to it. Either that or pull down the shades or use a glare guard. And any other light sources should be indirect.
Actually, no ergonomic design is going to be perfect for eight hours a day. People need to realize that your body is made to move around, and the, the computer workstation of today is very different than the office work style of yesterday, where people got up all the time to file and various sorts of things. Now all of that is electronically held within that same work area. People need to get up at regular intervals and stretch and uh, change their um, visual um, accommodation, um, move their hands, move their legs, move their shoulders. Uh, they need to do those sorts of things to keep their body the way it was naturally intended, and that's mobile. There is computer software available that reminds you when to take a well-deserved break. So take the advice. Take a break, and during that break, it is imperative that you stretch and exercise to relieve tension before it can build up and cause injury. Remember, these injuries can be permanent. The following are exercises you should perform each hour or whenever you feel strain or fatigue. And the best part about these exercises is that you don't have to wear spandex. Number one, take 10 deep breaths, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth, letting your stomach expand and contract. Breath is the life of these exercises. Slow, deep breaths should be taken throughout. Number two, before, during, and after a session, perform these warm-up exercises for your hands. Gently massage. Press the palm down to stretch the underside of the forearm. Hold for at least 10 seconds. Press the fist down to stretch the top side of the forearm. Again, hold for at least 10 seconds. In the next exercise, hold your hands out in front of you, fingers up, and use the other hand to gently pull back. Hold your hands out in front of you again, and spread your fingers as far apart as possible. Hold for 5 seconds, and repeat. And finally, shake them out. Number three, enhance circulation by stretching your arms overhead a few times. Then, holding your arms straight out from your sides, make circles forward and backwards. Number four, relieve a stiff neck by sliding your chin straight back keeping your head and ears level. Number five, relieve tension in your neck, shoulders and upper back with shoulder circles. Circle your shoulders back in wide arcs several times, then relax. You can also try this exercise for the middle back. Bring your elbows out to the side at chest height. Press them gently backward to your maximum stretch. Hold, then release. Exercise number seven is for your lower back. Lower your head and slowly roll your body as far as you can toward your knees. Hold for 10 seconds and release. Exercise number eight will strengthen your abdomen, which is important for a strong back. Sit with your buttocks firmly against the back of your chair. Exhale and tighten your abdominal muscles. Count to 10, release and repeat. Finally, these exercises are devised to relieve eye strain. Close them for a moment to moisten and provide rest from the light. Practice refocusing often throughout the day to exercise the muscles that focus the lens of your eye. To do this, look away from the computer screen and focus on an object at least 20 feet away. When that is in focus, 
Focus on something a foot away. Repeat three times. You can also exercise your eye muscles by rolling your eyes up and down and to the sides. I think the issue is whether or not we're going to nip this problem in the bud or it's going to grow into something massive. And I think that there is enough rec recognition out there right now that um, we can do something about it before it becomes too big a problem. We will now review the important points covered in the program. Ergonomics is the science of designing the workplace to fit the worker. To ensure that the workstation conforms to the size of the worker, the furniture must have flexible settings. The flexible settings required for the chair are, number one, a convex lumbar support that can be adjusted up or down so that it supports the lumbar curve of people of various heights. Number two, adjustable armrests, so that the arms bend at the elbow at a 90 degree angle. Number three, adjustable height, so that the feet rest squarely on the floor. Number four, an adjustable seat pan, so that the torso and thighs form at least a 90 degree angle. And number five, a padded seat. The keyboard holder must sit below the surface of the desk so that your arms form a 90 degree angle. The keyboard holder must have a tilt mechanism so that your wrists are straight as you type. You should use a rolled towel to assure that your wrists remain straight if the keyboard holder doesn't have a wrist rest. Ideally, the desk will have a height adjustment as well. All lighting must be indirect. For example, the monitor will be at a perpendicular angle to your window. Overhead lights must not shine directly on the monitor. However, if overhead light is the only illumination available, a glare guard should be placed over the monitor screen. The monitor can be placed in two positions, either on top of the desk, where the top of the monitor is at eye level, or below the desk and tilted at about 35 degrees, or wherever you can maintain the three natural curves of your spine. The contrast control on the monitor should be adjusted so that the type does not feel hard on the eyes. The spine must be properly aligned. The lumbar curve, which bears most of the strain of sitting, must be supported. The wrists must be perfectly straight. The arms must be bent at a 90 degree angle. The thighs and torso must form a 90 degree angle or greater. The feet must be firmly planted on the floor. When your spine is not properly aligned, then your ligaments and muscles must work overtime to compensate for the added stress on your spinal column. This, in turn, causes back fatigue, strain, and injury. Cumulative trauma disorders are caused by four factors. The first one is repetitive motion or performing the same task over and over again. The second one is position, or when the body is performing the repetitive task in the wrong position. The third is the amount of force you use. And the fourth factor is time, or performing a repetitive task over a long period of time. When you combine all these factors together, or even just one of them, over time, they will cause injury. Psychological stress 
can contribute to the causes of injury because the added stress causes tension of the muscles. Injuries can occur when you type continuously with your body in the wrong position. This happens when your workstation is not set up correctly, and the syndrome is called cumulative trauma disorder. As the hands are overworked, especially in the wrong position, tendons can swell, press on nearby nerves, and cause tingling and weakness in the fingers. This produces an extremely painful condition called tendinitis. Myositis occurs when muscles in the forearm that control the movement of fingers become irritated. Carpal tunnel syndrome is among the more extreme and less common forms of cumulative trauma. It develops when tissues in the palm side of the wrist swell, squeezing the carpal tunnel nerve that runs through the area. Repetitive stress injuries strike an estimated 185,000 U.S. office and factory workers a year. The cases account for more than half the country's occupational illnesses, compared with about 20% a decade ago. One mild case of carpal tunnel syndrome costs five to ten thousand dollars in medical care and lost work time according to a study by the American Physical Therapy Association. A serious case, requiring surgery on both hands, costs $100,000. Even simple movements performed away from the workstation can worsen injuries, such as holding the telephone and stirring dinner. Allowing the injury to progress too far can lead to a more serious condition. Setting up your workstation to perfectly fit and align your body is one way to prevent injury. Second, and perhaps more importantly, you should take frequent breaks and perform stretching and eye exercises during those breaks. Ergonomics. The reason the science came into being is because so many people are getting hurt on the job. By setting up an ergonomically sound workstation and incorporating the exercises demonstrated in this video into your workday, you can probably avoid unnecessary injury. Remember, be sure that your workstation fits you don't try to fit into your workstation. And exercise, exercise, exercise. Just recently, one of the major insurance companies reported in the Wall Street Journal that 45% of their workmen's compensation claims and 63% uh, of their uh, entire injury claims were due to cumulative uh, trauma disorders, uh, most notably uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. I think that we're only just beginning to realize what a problem cumulative trauma disorders can be. I think that we've only seen the tip of the iceberg.